A cancer is very much to do with motherhood. It symbolizes the breasts and caring and taking a bunch of people and, and creating a family out of that bunch of people. Cancer is all about belonging, caring, nurturing. It's the emblem of how to care for those in need. And so we start with the first expression of cancer, which is pragmatism. You have to be pragmatic, realistic, workable. It has to function to be meaningful. It's no good saying, oh, I've got this idea for my children. I'd like this, that, and the other. And I'd like, if it doesn't work, these ideas are just counterproductive. They're, they're actually dangerously so. So what cancer has to do, first and foremost, is be real. And we move from a state of being cared for as children towards being the carer as parents or something else. We don't necessarily begin with parenting, but we, we find something to care for, even if it's a pet or a project or, or um, a study or something. So we move from being careless to being careful. And this is a change of our loyalties. We were once loyal to the process of self, and we're mo moving away from that to the process of being loyal to another or others. So this is the, the first degree of cancer, the, the flag furled and unfurled. The flag represents loyalty. Furled means it's closed. Unfurled means it's open. So somebody has changed their allegiance. And we have to do that. This is growing up. We change our allegiance when we grow up. It's a mark of growing up that we can move from a very immature set of values towards a more considered and, and caring set of values. So Cancer One talks about that need for us to examine our loyalties and change them because we're changed. Situations have changed. Needs of the moment have changed. We cannot stick to old loyalties when the terms of reference are no longer in place that warranted those loyalties. And so we, we move forward then to the, um, the understanding of, of not this and that, not being loyal to this flag or that flag, but actually we, we rise to a level, a man suspended over a, a level plane, where we can see we can see more and we expand our perception away from duality to a more holistic sense of um, opportunity in the world. And um, this includes not only what is, but what could be. And linking this in with the first expression of cancer, it is pragmatic always to know in every situation, irrespective of whether we're talking family or anything else. It's always good to know what are the facts of the matter now and what could be, what might happen. This is what makes the possibility of being on top of things. Just don't tell yourself lies about what the facts are now and don't get stuck in that. Look at possibilities for change. So this is the second degree of cancer. And the, um, the movement we go from there is to understand that if we do want to engineer change, and actually even if we want to stay put with the status quo, there will be challenges. And cancer definitely is, is, is a sign of leadership. It's, it's the leading of, in this case, the, the deer the shaggy deer, the unrefined, innocent deer is being led by a man all bundled up against the elements, in, in, you know, a man that's assertive action, bundled up against the elements, I can determine my course of action. So Cancer 3 is about having the determination to break through whatever comes up, you know, just deal with the matter and, and, and get it done. When we go to Cancer 4, we're reminded that we don't have to justify ourselves. This idea of justification arises out of society's need for controlling the wildness in people. 
Why are you doing that? that? That's a question that society or an authority figure would ask you. Why are you doing that with this tone? But um, we don't need to justify ourselves if we're self-realized, if we actually are conscious and conscientious and of good conscience, then we don't have to just ourselves, justify ourselves to anyone. Only ourselves, really, that's what conscience is. So the cat arguing with a mouse, it's an absurd image. Um, why would a hunter argue with its prey? It's, it, it is reducing to the absurd the idea that we should justify ourselves, because we are what we are. And when you go through this process of, of breaking through new ground, you, you have to make decisions. You have to make assertive decisions that take action, that, that break things, that change the status quo, that, that are unredeemable. And you have to do that knowing that you're in the right, without any need to justify yourself to anyone else, just because you are confident. And then we get to the fifth degree of cancer, which is it's a sense of um, what happens when we have developed that, um, that sense of, of doing it our way without justification. Sometimes we have to take responsibility for the fact that it didn't work. It's wrong. You know, we made a mistake. We make mistakes. It's a trial and error kind of life we're living. We make mistakes all the time. But in Cancer 5, we're told what happens sometimes if we make those mistakes. An automobile, automobile is, is destroyed by a train. You know, the, the train represents the kind of irrefutable force of life. It, it, it's, it's, it's not compassionate, it's ruthless. And if a train is on a track, if, if life is moving in a certain direction, and you put yourself in, in front of harm's way, well, then you're going to get wrecked, you know. And it's foolish to pretend that, that you've got enough faith to overcome that. Your faith will overcome most things in life, but it will certainly not overcome silliness. It will not overcome irresponsibility. And the pragmatic approach of cancer is that, look, if it could go wrong, it will go wrong. And, and that's what you need when you're taking care of a family. You can believe in airy-fairy concepts all you like. And maybe the mystic can make them work. But the mother can't. Not necessarily. The mother has a responsibility that will take, actually, the rest of her life to discharge. And she can't ignore it now. And in Cancer 5, we see what happens if you try to ignore your responsibilities. Your life becomes a wreck. And primarily, we're responsible for ourselves. Secondarily, we're responsible for anything and anyone that we've made a commitment to take care of. Now, that includes giving birth to a child, whether you wanted to or not. So think about that. Whatever we have done, we're responsible for.